ugh, shouldn't have popped the spot, Lewis. You know when it's like a, there's a spot, and then there's a spot under the spot? I, never mind. Hey, so last video, I don't want to get too into this right now, but I feel like I worded what I was trying to say in a way that made me sound ungrateful. And I just wanted to say that I'm very grateful for every single person that views my videos, that is, that's not where I'm getting at. My frustration is that I'm very close to 100,000 subscribers and that means that 100,000 people have opted in to, to see my content and when I upload a video and I and I average around you know three four thousand views that's my frustration there is that I just don't know why my content isn't being put in front of those people that have, that have asked to see it basically. But some positives, my, my 1975 cover has been recommended to a lot of people. I've seen a lot of people commenting on that video saying that they are new and that this pops up in their suggestions and that's so cool. It's a first for me. So welcome everybody who, who's from that. Thank you so much for, for subscribing and, and for enjoying the cover. I also learned that you guys maybe want to see something slightly different to the music. So here I am a few gin and tonics in on a Tuesday and I am going to do a little Q&A for y'all. So, here we go. Oh, Brennick O'Connor, Ollie from Game of Thrones. Claim to fame, he just liked my video on, on Instagram. You know the deal, there's a hashtag, bloody hell Harry. Let's go for it, am I right? <laughs> okay, the questions have started pouring in, flooding in. There's a torrent of questions. <laughs> Let's start. The first person to reply is Katie and she says Bloody hell Harry When will we hear new music? Katie I don't quite know. I'm working hard and writing as much as possible for album 3 I know that there are a few songs that will make the record and, and when I'm ready to show them to you I will. I'm sorry for the first answer to be a cop out But I don't know. I'm sorry Mary asks, will you ever release the song Spark? Bloody hell, Harry. Mary, probably. For those of you who don't know, I wrote a song for One Direction that never made it to them. I accidentally played it on a Hearthstone live stream a couple of years ago and people really liked it, so maybe. Who knows, maybe. Kate East asks, are you watching Love Island? And if so, who's it? I'm not watching Love Island. I watched about 10 minutes of it last year and it infuriated me, so... I'm sorry, but I don't watch that. I love your your display picture though. It looks like you're wearing a swim tee. Yes, you are. Swim represent. Thank you so much, Kate. I owe you my life. Annie says, bloody hell, Harry. Has there been one particular moment in your musical career that you're most proud of? Yes, there have been a million moment. There have been, come on Lewis, there have been a million moments that I'm very proud of as a musician. I honestly didn't think that anybody in their right mind would ever want to listen to me make noise from my mouth and so I, I have moments that I'm very proud of, you know, a wide range of moments that I'm very proud of, spanning from my first ever headline show in God, 2012. We sold out St Pancras Old Church was wonderful to selling out Shepherd's Bush in London, which is the venue that I've, I'd always wanted to play, to playing three nights at the Sydney Opera House supporting Birdie. That was something that was really cool for me. Seeing people have my lyrics tattooed on their skin forever, incredible. I supported Coldplay in a pub. <laughs> I mean, come on. I, I just have so many, so many brilliant memories of, of this career so far and I just can't wait to, to carry it on and I hope that I'm able to, to keep it going, to sustain this lifestyle. Now this is a good one. Emily says, bloody hell, Harry. When are you restocking the swim tees again? Great question. For those of you who don't know, I started my own clothing company. It's called Swim. At the moment, we just have one product. I've been working very hard at, at getting a whole range, a portfolio of products, but I will order another batch tomorrow. I'm just waiting for something is in the post that I want to also get a sample made at the same time. So I'm waiting for that at the moment, but it should be, I don't know, two and a half, maybe three weeks. So yes, Emily, there will be some soon, I promise. Whoa, here you go, door. 
Dora? Dor. Dora? <laughs> Asks Levis, how do you feel about people having your lyrics slash songs slash handwriting tattooed on them? I can imagine it being so surreal. In parentheses, love girl with the outgrow tattoo. Bloody hell, Harry. First of all, door, door, door. I feel like, first of all, you. <laughs> I'm ever so sorry if I'm butchering your name. Thank you so, so much for having my lyrics tattooed on you. You have absolutely no idea how much that means to me and I love you times a billion. In response to your question, at first it scared me. It scared me a lot because I was, that's a massive commitment, man. And that's something that I just didn't, I didn't think, I didn't think my lyrics were worthy of, of that amount of respect. But then it struck me that, you know, lots of things mean, I don't know how to explain it, but I had an epiphany where, you know, if, if something that I write can mean so much to, to somebody that they get it inked on their skin, uh, then I must be doing something right. And it really gave me a, a second wind, you know, in the whole songwriting front. And it's something that, blows my mind every day that I see these lyrics happen that's absolutely unreal. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you if you have anything related to me inked on your skin. I, honestly, I, I love you forever and <sighs> thank you, thank you. Emily asks, dating tips? Sorry, dating tips? Bloody hell, Harry. Emily, just be yourself. Be yourself, you don't owe anything to anybody. If, if somebody likes you for the fact that you're you, then that's wonderful. And that's wonderful, maybe you should pursue that further. But don't try and bend and mold yourself into something you're not to impress somebody. That is ridiculous and you'll only regret it. You matter, you are loved, and you will find somebody that, that will help you see that, I promise. However, if you just want like a dating tip, you know, in terms of dating, uh, be funny, be confident, uh, wear a nice perfume, and just be yourself. Just be yourself, Emily. Stacy Miller, hello, Stacy. Queen crop top, I'll call you. <laughs> um, that's a kind of personal joke between myself and Stacy that I actually just made up, and she doesn't know anything about. So actually, it's just a personal joke between me and myself. Quite pathetic, actually. But she asks, bloody hell, Harry. When are you and Soph getting your own dog? As soon as we have a garden. A little secret here that I definitely shouldn't be telling you. Again, probably definitely shouldn't have mentioned that. I don't know if future Lewis is going to edit that out or not, but Anyway, so as soon as we have a garden, then we will probably receive a pupper of our own. We are dying to get one. <laughs> Just had a text from Soph in the other room. You have to edit that Spotify bit out. I will, but I will, I promise. Spicy Becca asks, what an interesting name, by the way. Spicy. It's very me. It's very me. Any song recs for this week? Now, I, I believe you mean recommendations, in which case, yes. I have lots. If you guys are on Spotify, you should follow my weekly playlist. It's called Lewis Watson's Weekly Playlist, and the image is a man playing a flute. So if you have, you know, trouble finding that, just search for a man with the flute. He's he has a beard. I have loads. I update this as as often as I can. Sometimes it's not weekly. I must I must admit, uh, because sometimes I don't. I'm not seeking new music. I want to enjoy the music that I'm enjoying at the time. And so I, you know, I don't. I don't want to keep putting the same songs on my weekly playlist, of course, but I have lots of recommendations. Lainey, they have a song called Dumb Stuff, which I think is wonderful. I think that's something that people deserve to listen to. Sean Kerry, uh, who is, is, funnily enough, he's one of the drummers in Bon Iver. Uh, he has his solo project and he has done for a while now. I've been a big fan of it for a while. But on his album that he released uh, a few months ago, uh, it's called Hundred Acres. He has a song called Emery, which is a beautiful song. I, I definitely recommend that. Uh, Manchester Orchestra, one of my favourite bands, uh, on their first record, uh, Like a Virgin, I'm Like a Virgin Losing a Child. They have a song called Na The Neighbourhood is Bleeding, which I love. 
the new Snow Patrol record, they have a song called Empress, which is fantastic. Nina Nesbitt has a wonderful song called The Sun Will Come Up, The Seasons Will Change, which I actually think is one of my favourite metaphors of the past few years. I think it's absolutely a wonderful metaphor and a very good song as well. There's a band called Tippling Rock and they did an acoustic EP, I think, uh, but they have a song called Campus Fashion, which is wonderful, particularly the acoustic version. The, the full band version is great as well, but particularly the acoustic version. Lots. If you just go onto that playlist and stick it on shuffle, chances are, you, you know, you may not like a lot of it, but I, I guarantee that you will find a new favourite band or artist uh, if you just keep listening to it. It's, it's a playlist full to the brim with bangers. I'll put a link down below to the playlist. I promise you'll enjoy it. Alice Spills asks, favorite alcoholic bevy? Bloody hell, Harry. A really smug looking emoji, and then an emoji who's been hit in the eyes with stars. <laughs> uh, it changes a lot. I I'm a big fan of gin and tonic. It's By the way, this is a cup that's called Sick. Seriously ice cold. When I was in America with my uh, my step aunt, I guess it would be. It's my step mum's sister in law. <laughs> step aunt in law? She's wonderful, a wonderful person called Marcy. Marcella. She's incredible. I drank a lot of grape soda when I'm in the States because we don't have it in the UK. It's my favourite thing. And she told me to put it in this seriously ice cold thermos cup it's wonderful this this drink will stay cold for hours and there's no condensation it never leaves any like marks anyway add not spawn gin and tonic is like my favorite thing recently i've been putting some cherry juice in my gin and tonic as well which is a wonderful touch but beer cider, or anything i was always a fan of doom bar that you get in draft in the uk but i don't think it's vegan at least the draft stuff isn't vegan i don't think the brew dog stuff is great anything on it's just not tequila i've had too many wobbly nights on tequila and so i can't drink tequila <laughs> anymore it makes me really ill and i don't enjoy it so not tequila or whiskey actually my dad drinks a lot of whiskey and and i've tried i've tried a lot of times and i just don't not straight anyway whiskey with something i do enjoy but i just can't enjoy it Sorry, Dad. Chelsea asks, describe Tom Hanks in four words. I was running. 